This is the third part of Amazon EKS tutorial. Let's say you have created a development EKS Kubernetes cluster. If you used I'm user to create the EKS, only you have access to that cluster. It's very likely that you have other team members who would like to do something with that cluster. You may have other DevOps team members that would need admin privileges to maintain the cluster. You may also have, let's say, development team one that needs access to a specific namespace, like team one namespace. You could create a namespace resource quota. For example, this team can only use 10 CPU and 20 GB of memory and create a maximum of 12 pods. You create quotas to avoid any interference between teams. One team could use all the EKS resources and if the other team tries to deploy, sometimes pods will be in pending state and you can be sure that they will blame you for the EKS cluster being broken. You could also have another development team, let's say team 2, that needs read and write access to another team 2 namespace for their development work. You can grant access to individual user, but the better approach would be to create a common IAM role for the team, assign all the permissions to that role and allow team members to assume that role. Later, you may create a dedicated EKS cluster for the production environment. Typically, you would only grant read access for the developers for them to be able to debug if necessary. By using Airbug, you could also grant them only permissions to access the application logs in their namespaces. So there is a lot of flexibility in Airbug. Now, on the AWS side, we can use IAM users or IAM roles as objects that represent identities. On Kubernetes, for the identities, we can use Kubernetes service accounts, users, and Airbag groups. In this video, we'll map IAM user and in the second part, IAM role to a custom Airbag groups that would have different permissions. I have another tutorial that covers Airbag in detail if you want to learn how to grant your identities granular access within Kubernetes. For the first example, we'll use I'm user as well as I'm policy with a minimum set of permissions for that user. It will only allow updating the local Kubernetes config and connecting to the EKS cluster. On the Kubernetes side, we'll create a viewer role with read-only permissions to access certain objects from the core Kubernetes API, such as deployments and config maps. Then we'll use cluster role binding to bind this viewer airbag role to a new my viewer airbag group. And finally, in order to link I'm user with this airbag group, we'll use EKS API instead of old deprecated auth config map. The best practice is not to use identities such as I'm users with long-term credentials. Instead, for the second part, we'll create I'm role and I'm policy that would grant that I'm role admin access to EKS on the AWS side. On the Kubernetes side, we cannot use built-in Airbag groups that start with system prefix. So we'll use the default cluster admin cluster role and bind it with our new my admin group. Next, we'll create a manager I'm user and additional I'm policy that would allow that user to assume the EKS admin I'm role. Finally, we'll bind that I'm role with Kubernetes my admin Airbag group using EKS. API. First of all, let's go over Kubernetes Airbag part. Let's create a cluster role with read-only permissions for all namespaces. Those users will get get, list, and watch permissions for objects like deployments and secrets. The star indicates the core API group. You can call this role reader or viewer, it's up to you. Now, we need to bind this role to some kind of Kubernetes entity. We can use users, Kubernetes service accounts, or like in this case, we can create my viewer airbag group. I intentionally use different names to make it obvious in the next part which entity we will link with AWS IAM user. Besides the group, we need to specify which role we want to bind to this group. In this case, it's viewer. Let's go ahead and apply the role and binding. Next, we need I'm user to play with. You can create this user from the console, but I'll use Terraform to create the user and AWS console to generate the keys. However, you can do everything through the Terraform. First of all, let's use AWS IAM user Terraform resource to create a developer IAM user in AWS. Then we need to grant access to EKS in AWS 
to at least be able to update local Kubernetes config and connect to the cluster. This is the minimum requirement. This user won't be able to view workloads in AdBios console, just connect to the EKS cluster. And of course, you can restrict it to a certain cluster only, for example, to only development EKS cluster. Next, we directly attach this policy to our user. The best practice, of course, is attach those permissions to IAM group and place the user in that group. Next, the most important part is to bind developer I'm user with Airbag My Viewer group using EKS API. This part used to be managed through Kubernetes auth config map, but now it is deprecated, and this is the only recommended option. All right, let's go ahead and apply Terraform. Now we have the developer user, and the next step is to generate security credentials for our user. It's pretty much the same as we did in the first section. The difference here is that we'll create a custom profile for that user. Let's run AWS configure and give this profile a name, developer. Copy access key ID as well as the secret access key. Next, let's make sure that we configured that profile correctly and can access AdWiz. You can see the IRAN of the user is developer. The next step is to connect to EKS cluster. It's pretty much the same command, just add profile developer. Most of the AWS CLI commands accept this flag. Now we can quickly check that the local Kubernetes config uses developer profile. You can see below the profile that was used to connect to EKS. Let's check if you have access to the cluster. If you remember, we created a custom cluster role for this user and bound it with the My Viewer group. So we should be able to get pods in all namespaces. kubectl has a subcommand that can help you to check access to Kubernetes. First, the verb is for the action, like get. Second, for the type of object, in this case, pod. So the answer is yes. Now, let's see if we can get nodes. We have the error since the viewer cluster role does not have permissions for global resources. We can use the same auth subcommand and get the no answer. Also, to check if the user has admin privileges, you use a star for the action and for the resource type. So the developer obviously doesn't have admin access. Next, we'll create another IAM user and IAM role and grant admin privileges in the cluster. Kubernetes ships with a default cluster admin role and group. However, the EKS API for managing access won't let us use the default group that start with the system prefix. So we need to create our own admin group in Kubernetes. It's actually very easy, we'll use existing cluster admin role and bind it to our new my admin group. Now, before we can apply this cluster binding, we need to switch to the previous user that created EKS cluster and has admin access. Just run update one more time without specifying the profile. It will use the default profile. Let's apply the binding and create my admin airbag group. Next, we need to create a manager I'm user and role using Terraform. First, we need AdBS account number for I'm role. You can hard code it, but a better approach would be to use Terraform data resource to dynamically retrieve it. Next, we create IAM role that would get admin privileges inside the Kubernetes cluster, and you can share this role with anyone who needs it. There are a couple of ways to define trust relationship with users. One way is to create a role and use root as a principle. In this way, potentially all users in that AWS account will get access to that role. Next, we need to create IAM policy with admin access inside AWS account. So these permissions are granted on the AWS site. You can also grant additional permissions to view all EKS tabs. Next, we bind IAM role with those permissions. All right, the next step is to create another I'm user and let that user assume this role. We'll also use Terraform to create the user and we'll generate keys manually. Keep in mind that when you decide to tear down the infrastructure, for example, to run Terraform destroy, first you would need to manually delete keys from AdBS. 
Otherwise, Terraform won't be able to delete these users. Next, let's create IAM policy that would allow assuming EKS IAM admin role. It's very simple, we just use the IRAN for that role under the resource. Next, we attach that policy to the user. Again, best practice is to create IAM group. Then we use EKS API and bind IAM role, in this case with my admin RBA group inside Kubernetes. Alright, let's go ahead and apply it. Now we have a manager user and we need to generate security keys to create a local AWS profile. Let's configure the manager profile, but we will not use it directly to access EKS. So keep watching, copy the access key and the secret key. Now, this is important check if you can assume EKS admin IAM role. If you get temporary credentials back, it means you configured everything correctly. Now, we need to create another AWS profile manually. You can use any text editor. Right under the manager profile, let's create another one and call it EKS admin profile. That profile doesn't have any credentials. Instead, it will use the manager profile to assume this role and obtain a temporary session token. So we have EKS admin profile, IAM role and manager source profile. Again, let's update Kubernetes config, but this time use EKS admin profile, not manager. Check if the correct profile is used. Try to get ports and check if you are admin in that cluster. And the answer is yes. Lastly, let's see what EKS tab in EKS shows. So we have EKS admin role bound to my admin and I'm user developer bound to my viewer airbag group. Don't forget to delete security keys manually from NBS console before running Terraform destroy and use I'm roles instead of binding a single I'm users to groups in Kubernetes. The next part will cover horizontal pod autoscaler and how to install the metrics server in EKS using Helm Terraform provider.